Well, good morning. Think we're gonna have a good one for y'all today. We get into a, several things. We're planning on getting into several things in this video, but we, we have to get some fences fixed. I'm gonna go and show you what we did there. I um, actually did some fencing in the dark. Um, not something we typically do, but the circumstances kind of required it. Then we're headed to the hay field. We're gonna try to get some hay, um, mostly or primarily square bale put up for the horses, but got a lot of stuff to do today. Um, hope we get it all done, especially on the hay sacks. I think there's a little chance of rain tomorrow. But anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Um, the, the channel has really grown over these last couple of months. Um, it's because folks like you watch, and sometimes I don't know why, but, <laughs> but we appreciate it. Um, subscribe if you haven't, we really like that. Um, that helps us out. Give the video a thumbs up. That's enough talk. Let's get to work. Okay, coming at you early this morning. Um, tempted to say bright and early, but clearly, other than the flashlight, nothing bright today. But we just got back in town last night, and I will point out my brother and my dad watched over all the animals for us. Everything was fine. Really appreciated them doing that. But we get back in town, Willis and I are checking stockers last night, stocker steers, or late yesterday evening, and we're up here by the bunks, you know, put some feet out. We hadn't seen really any of them yet. There's a commotion over here in the woods, which I think was just a limb that fell out of a tree. We kind of walked over there to investigate it, and we find a section of fence, probably 30, 40 feet, just fence is gone. It is on the ground. A little bit of panic sets in, of course. You know, for a split second, then, you know, quickly could tell, okay, the animals hadn't been coming and going here, so we're, we're good there. But what we did, we, we moved all the calves out of this pasture, so it wouldn't be an issue, with the exception of a couple, because, of course, there's always a couple that don't cooperate. And so, just got to thinking, and I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and, and knock it out first thing this morning. Being that we have been out of town, I've got several days before I have another day off. Just wasn't going to have a chance to get this done in the daylight. Problem on the fence, you can see right there on that post, all those wires broken, laying on the ground, and really all the way over to that tree there, there is no fence. Yeah, like I said, about 30, 40 feet maybe. But you can see this post here, laid over. I think it's actually broken off. I mean, something really had to heavy on that and then another post there leaning bad but you yeah, really don't know what may have done this i mean there's not a, a big tree on the fence here or anything the animals hadn't been coming and going the the timber was all cut next door and i think what's going to be really the only logical explanation is in their cleanup or, or at some point you know they had gotten something on the fence we we certainly know that falling trees and fences don't mix very well but we had checked all this and I had thought they were done. I walked every inch of this fence because I knew there was a big potential for this. But apparently they weren't quite done or they had to come back. And I mean, I don't know. I don't, don't really mean to blame it on anybody else, but just don't know of another explanation for how the fence could be just completely, I mean, those posts completely bent over and broken off like that with no tree or anything actively on the fence. But anyway, six o'clock on the dot now. Pretty good shape, should be able to get done in time to get home and get showered. Ready for the day job. There's three wires, two more to go. So that's five wires spliced back together. We're gonna need to put, I think, two posts. One, we've got kind of a low spot right there. Need to pull them down a little bit, and another one right in here. And then we're gonna just about be done with this little project. So, that doesn't look half bad. I think that I say this after every time I patch fences, but don't know that I win any engineering awards or beauty contest, but it functions. It certainly looks much better than it did. It's about 6.30 now means I have about an hour and a half to get this feed bin moved, get the steers fed, get home showered and to work. So should have plenty of time. There's at least one of the steers that didn't want to cooperate and move to the next pasture last night. Oh, there's both of them. Don't know that you'll be able to see them in the low light, but they are both right there. I actually did put them just a little feed in the feed bunk. But, so they're here. That's a good sign. I was pretty sure that he can get out, but we'll move this thing up the road. 
feed the bigger bunch of them and then it'll work. We got the feed pen moved. Mineral feeder is right there. We did get a bag of Vitaferm put in there, but they're all in here. Seem to be pretty content. Good sign. We get truck unhooked from that bin and head home. So like I said, we're gonna be square bailing most of this hay, and so we need trailers to put that hay on, get it loaded up, moved out of the field under the barn before we maybe get that rain tomorrow. So I'm headed to my brother's place. He has one of the trailers, got some equipment on it right now, actually a part of our cattle you know, holding pen, and get that off there. That way that trailer will be ready to go. And then we're gonna be getting ready to move some equipment around, do different sorts of things there. I got talking distracted. Didn't run the camera for any of the unloading, but it was pretty boring. Just the two of us getting all that stuff off this trailer. Mainly because we're gonna need that trailer this afternoon to put some hay on it. Or at least that's the plan. But we're gonna get this pen put together sometime in the next couple of weeks. It's got some more panels on the way, load and shoot and whatnot. So all the steers are walking off over the hill there, but get them on a truck here in a little over another month. But anyway, now we're headed, gotta to head to the farm store. We've got a bad tire on the accumulator. So we're just gonna go buy another set of little wheels and tires for it get those brought home put on there okay so i made it back from the farm store got wheel and tire to replace on here but as you can see we needed two ideally so and i called ahead gave them skew number everything off the website they said they had it and i guess the skews don't specify whether we're dealing with five lug or four lug we needed five lug they only had one they had four of the four lug. So a totally different rant for a different video, but these, these farm stores just, uh, they jack me up, you know, make me so mad. They, they cater more to the crowd, you know, looking to buy some Chinese made cowboy boots or, you know, chicken feed and stuff like that. Not, you know, they, they just don't have knowledgeable people there working. But anyway, we're gonna get one put on there. See if maybe we can get one of these to take air We'd wanted to just have a whole nother set and where we could have some spares off to the side, but um, who knows where it looks like we're going to make this work some way or another. On a brighter note, it's a battery powered impact. The wrenches are nice. So now we're going to see if we can get either one of those to hold air and maybe can get by because you can kind of halfway get by with just one on here but not 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 a good plan especially because we gotta take this thing down the road three or four miles but keep going on good news we did get one to take air let's see if i can get the other one just putting a strap around there pull it down tight get it seated on the rim then see if we can get it to take a little Air Force. The other one was the better looking tire. We really only need one, but really bad to have the back up. both of these to take air so that's good so now we'll have a a spare seemed like in years past I believe it was that one would all would, wouldn't hold air for very long so go ahead and pop this one back on here and then we're gonna bring a tractor back here hook onto it you need to grease this thing i'll kind of show you how it works um of course you pull it with the tractor kind of offset over here bales go in here first bale there and of course that swings over Next bale goes in there, which then swings this gate over. And same thing happens on this side. One on the outside, one on the inside. And when it goes on the inside, trips that lever, allows those to slide to the back. Then four more go in there. 
once that eight bale hits, boom, tail, the, the back tailgate opens. Both of them open, I should guess I should say. And you have a little pack of eight. Picking up the first trailer that we're going to use, or at least one of the trailers that we're going to use for the hay. Um, just an old cotton trailer. Um, you know, normally, when this was used to haul cotton, for those of you not familiar, would have had another side, just like on that opposite side there. That's really nice uh, to repurpose these. Probably the primary thing we see them repurposed for around here. Just cut one side out of it, stacks the hay in there real easily. Um, you know, you really don't even have to strap it down, especially if you're not going up higher in the sides. And uh, works really well. Miraculously, all the tires were up on this thing. And it's been sitting there for uh, about a year. But we can get it moved up there to the field, get it unhooked, and then start working on moving some tractors and other equipment in. But yeah, just kind of go over that. This, you can see this is one of the equipment sheds my dad and uncle use. They got planter sprayer, one combine over there grain cart um, they just finished shelling corn yesterday i believe and getting ready to switch over to soybeans uh, just gonna unhook and leave that trailer right there we got this field here kind of goes around the corner there a little bit the one back there behind the house that's where my aunt and uncle live that still may be just a little green it said maybe this afternoon before we can get going uh, might be true, but I appreciate the wind is blowing. Hope we're not getting too much of that picked up on the microphone. But the fact that summer is not going down without a fight probably helps too. It was 90 yesterday, going to be 88 today. I think our evening lows are barely getting below 70 right now. But yeah, summer's pulling me old Lee Corso and saying, not so fast, my friend. So it looks like I drew the straw for rake duty. So I'm headed to first field, it's a little smaller field, I think it's three or four acres, gonna get it raked. Then go to the farm where we're gonna drop off those trailers. We're actually gonna start baling there even though I'm gonna rake the smaller field first. Got the balers moved, got a couple of trailers moved. My dad and brother are still moving the accumulator in that little tractor right now. When I get done raking, we'll unhook the rake off the back of this. I've got the accumulator ground on the front. So we're getting started with the rake. I just wanted to clarify the reason we're raking not in the same order we're baling is because this tractor does, again, it has the grapple on the front that we're using to pick up all the square bales with. So we need to finish raking where we're gonna start square baling and we're probably just gonna roll all this for cow hay. All right, so we're rolling on with the rake now. They're getting a square baler lined out, seeing how it's doing. So rolling roll, long raking pretty good. We're getting just, you know, we're over halfway done with this field and we'll have one more to go. But just to talk a little more. So this is Bermuda grass, uh, Tifton 44, um, hybrid Bermuda. And the way we handle it kind of up to today, because obviously you see now we're raking it and baling it. Some of it's square baler, some of it will be with a round baler part there. But we, we disc mow it usually on day one. We'll run a tether over it on the next day, day two. And then by the third day, it, it's gonna be ready to, to rake and bale. Sometimes you get into this time of the year and we do have to add an extra day of, di of drying in there. So you may cut it one day, let it lay for 48 hours, so not tether it till day three. And then rake and bale on day four or may tether it on day two, let it lay there a couple of days, either way. But like I said earlier, summer is not going down without a fight it's been really hot and so we had a nice little breeze this morning it, it has dried out pretty well so we're staying on that regular schedule of just being able to get it mailed on day, day three so we get done raking this and i'm gonna unhook the rake and we'll start picking up loading trailers Stop, rake, rake, for a second to show you how that works all ground driven bad better in the shorts I gotta make fun of my brother. He plugged the baler. Having to dig it out there. Shear the bolt over here. Uh, we let him have the dirty job. We gotta get that bolt out of there. 
get that line back up. But yeah. And maybe the worst part about this whole deal, you can probably see there behind me, right next to the road. So everybody driving by used to honk and laugh at us. Although these folks living around here now, I doubt many of these people could even tell you this is hay we're bailing, much less that what kind of problem we're having. So much for me claiming out to me a five or 10 minute fix and so much for staying clean. See, I've gotten dirty. Not that I was planning on staying clean, but I had accomplished that at this point. But where that bolt sheared off, the threads on the back side, we can't get the nut off because it won't back. And then, yeah, it's hard to explain. And you're operating a cubby hole back there, of course, everything's extremely dusty. All right, so now we're loading hay. See if I can set the camera up because it's definitely a two-hand job. We're going to kind of show you how this works with uh, this grapple or grabber or whatever you want to call it and um, show you how kind of how we look at a trailer loaded. got everything on the trailer that was accumulated uh, when I finished out that last top row would be 200 bales my dad had to quit accumulating to get on the round baler my brother's finished up square bale I think he's pretty much done and he's gonna get that tractor home and come back but we're gonna jump on the accumulator for a few minutes get a few more bunched up we can finish loading that trailer. I think I'll put three more on there that'll make that row then I may just put three packs on the very top versus five that have been doing others. Then we got another trailer parked over there, but now we get to jump on the little guy. Round baler in action. Good luck cow hay there. Of course, it's obviously this is more quality hay, but uh, pretty much all the round rolls would be for cows. But brother's done headed home with square baler. I, I didn't even ask him what total number bailed was. Uh, dad's gonna roll what's left right here. We've actually got stuff in the three or four acre patch to roll and then uh, just gotta get this picked up. So we are done accumulating the, looking at the counter on the baler, of course it broke just a few bales, but had right at 360, which works out to a perfect 45 eight bale packs. Doing a lot of math in my head right now, but we're gonna have 28 packs on this trailer when it's loaded. It has five times four is 20. There's 22 on it right now. 
threw them on like 25 and I think I put three more on top. That's gonna leave us, that 28 will then leave us with 17. I think we usually put about 12 packs on that trailer. We can go three long, four high without it being overdone. Might go a little higher on that one. That'll just leave us with five more packs, 40 bales. I think my brother might have just a little trailer. Or we'll put those on the back of the truck. Yeah, looks like we're gonna get everything loaded up and out of here with what we got left. So, but we can go on the tractor, load, finish this trailer out, and then uh, I think the keys are in his truck over there. I'll move that other trailer up here where it'll be a little closer. We're just about to get all this hay loaded. There was one other thing I want to talk to you about that I haven't ever mentioned before because it's brand new. And I don't know how many of you are also podcast listeners, but for those of you who are or who maybe would be interested in hearing more about farming and agriculture, brand new podcast I'm going to be dropping. Well, by the time this video airs, it will have already dropped podcast called talk dirt to me look it up on you know whatever podcast platform you use apple podcast spotify whatever maybe there's others out there but it's basically my cousin uh, who actually grew up right here my uncle's son and i talking farming it's kind of an uncensored you know our generation i guess you know, kind of the age of mid millennials perspective on farming, kind of current issues in agriculture, um, things like that. But anyway, check it out. Um, like I said, we've already recorded a few episodes. They're going to drop starting, well, again, by the time this video airs. So look it up, talk dirt to me, see what you think. The trailer is loaded. I actually ended up putting 29 packs on there. I don't know what I was thinking. I kind of split the difference on either end without the last row. So just four on the top, five on all the other guys. So 192 bales there. As I'm sitting here, I'm, you know, we're filming, we're bailing, we're doing everything. I'm thinking, you know, about the video and getting it edited. What am I gonna call this video? What am I gonna title it? It hit me. Making hay while the sun shines and fencing while it doesn't. I mean, sometimes I amaze myself how clever I can be. Now, but I did think to myself, that's kind of a long title for a YouTube video. I don't even know that it'll all show up. You know, we read it all at one time. But that's what we're gonna call this one. Go get that other trailer, truck and trailer. We'll pull it over here where it'll be good and convenient. So these last few packs out here and be done with this. I can take the sunglasses off, sun is down behind the trees now, but hay is all loaded. Got that trailer there loaded. Got that one there. That is all of it on those two trailers. All the square hay anyway. I don't know how many round rolls we had because I hadn't seen that. He went up the road and bailed that other. But I'm gonna get it strapped on this trailer. One nice thing about the cotton trailer is you don't really need to strap it with having the three sides, but get this stuff moved to the barn for the night, but probably about where we're gonna end this video. Uh, one, because you don't want to see me try to back a cotton trailer under the barn or more specifically you don't want to hear the cussing that'll happen as we're trying to do that um kind of hoping maybe somebody else will show up a little more skilled at backing those type of trailers but anyway appreciate everybody watching y'all come back next time we're going to keep pumping them out hope y'all keep enjoying it and y'all eat beef and god bless